equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are fractions that name the same amount. In other words, they have different names, you read them differently, but they're worth the same amount or they represent the same part of a whole. Let's look at a few examples that we can easily see. Um, when we compare fraction towers, we can look at the one-half piece here, and there are many different ways in the, in the set of fraction towers to represent parts that are equal to one-half. We can show three-sixths, and we can show five-tenths, and when we compare these pieces, they are all the same height, which means that they are equivalent fractions or equal to, to one-half. When we look at pattern block pieces, um, we know that two of the blue pieces um, represents two-thirds, but we can also cover the same amount of space with four green pieces, which we call four-sixths. So two-thirds and four-sixths are equivalent fractions because they name the same amount or cover the same part of the whole. On a, lump, on a number line, it's easy to see that one half is equal to five tenths. No matter how many, um, whether you divide the line into two pieces or into ten pieces, these um, fractions are still on the same point in the number line, halfway between zero and the one whole. And finally, we can see equivalent fractions with a set model. Um, nine twelfths of these circles are red, but we can also choose to look at it in rows and find an equivalent fraction. Um, here's a row of red, another row of red, three rows of red. So when I look at it this way, I can see that three out of four rows total are red, which tells us that nine twelfths is equivalent to three fourths. So when we are talking about equivalent fractions, the big idea is that you can find equivalent fractions by multiplying or dividing a fraction by a one whole fraction. Let's start really simple and work our way to fractions. Um, we know that 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 divided by 1 is 5. Any number multiplied by 1 or divided by 1 is going to stay the number, and that is the, uh, the definition of identity property. So likewise, if we take a fraction and multiply it by 1, 3 fifths times 1, we're going to get the same answer. It doesn't change the number. Or if we divide a fraction by 1, 8 tenths divided by 1, we're still going to get 8 tenths. So if we take a fraction that's equal to 1 whole, for example, 2 halves is the same as 1 whole, if we multiply that, we're going to get I do 3 times 2 on the top, the numerators, and 5 times 2 is 10. I get 6 tenths. But if I know I'm multiplying by 1, that means that what I started with and what I ended with are equal. They're equivalent fractions. So 3 fifths is equal to 6 tenths. Over here, I'm going to try dividing by a one whole fraction. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and when I divide by 1, this fraction 2 halves is equal to 1. When I divide by 1, I'm going to get a number that is worth the same amount. So 8 tenths is equal to 4 fifths. And it's important to remember that in a one whole fraction, the, do, the numerator and the denominator are the same number. So whenever I'm multiplying by a one whole fraction, be sure that you have your numerator and your denominator worth the same amount, both two halves or three thirds or five fifths. We can use equivalent fractions to compare fractions. Uh, the big idea is that we will make both fractions have the same denominator so that they are easy to compare. So I have here the fractions 2 thirds and 3 fourths, which are pretty close. And if I can change them, find an equivalent fraction that they both will have the same denominator. So for example, 2 thirds is equal to 8 twelfths, and 3 fourths is equal to 9 twelfths. Now they have the same denominator, it's much easier to compare them. We know that when the denominators are the same, the bigger fraction is the one with the greater numerator. So 8 twelfths is less than 9 twelfths, which means that 2 thirds is less than 3 fourths. So let's see how exactly we would do that, find the steps of knowing how to change the denominators so that they are the same. 
The first step is to look at your two fractions and list a few multiples of both of the denominators. So I'm going to list the multiples of 3 and the multiples of 4. So you can sing our song if you want to. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. That's probably enough. We'll stop there. And if it's not, you could always add on more. And then we're going to sing our four song, the multiples of four. Oh, let's all count together. Count by fours. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. That's probably enough. Now, step two is to find the least common multiple. All that means is the smallest number that they both have in common in the list of multiples that we've made. So we're going to start here at the smaller numbers and look for something that's the same. Ah, here it is. They both have 12, and that's the smallest number that they both have in common in their list of multiples. So I like to circle them. And instead of saying every time least common multiple, we can abbreviate it LCM. The LCM of 3 and 4 is 12. This is the first step and second step in changing our denominators so that we can compare them. Now, step three, we're going to use our least common multiple, which we found out was 12, as the new denominator for both fractions. So I'm going to change this fraction to an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 12 here, and I'm going to make the denominator of this one also 12. I'm going to come up with equivalent fractions with new denominators. Step four, ask yourself, how do I get from the old denominator to the new one? And then you're going to do the same thing to the numerator. So it looks like this. How do I get from 3 to 12? Well, I multiply by 4 in order to get from 3 to 12. So I'm going to do the same thing to the top. I'm going to multiply by 4 to the numerator. And that should look like a one whole fraction to you. You may even want to draw a 1 around it to see that I'm really multiplying by 1. So now I do the 2 the, to the numerator. 2 times 4 is 8. So we have an equi a new equivalent fraction, a, fra a new fraction that's equivalent to 2 thirds. So let's do the same thing to 3 fourths. I say, I ask myself, how do I get from 4 to 12? Well, 4 times 3 is 12. So I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator that I did to the denominator. 3 times 3. Oh, and there's my one whole fraction, 3 thirds. So I'm multiplying by one whole. 3 times 3 is 9. So my new numerator is 9, and my new fraction, equivalent to 3 fourths, is 9 twelfths. Now that I have the well, last step, now that I have um, denominators that are the same, common denominators, I can just compare the numerators. And you can easily see that 9 is bigger than 8. So 8 twelfths is less than 9 twelfths, but more importantly, what we started with, 2 thirds is less than 3 fourths. So let's do one example all the way from the beginning, comparing 2 thirds and 7 ninths. Remember, the first step is to list all the multiples of both of your denominators in order to help you find a common denominator. So I'm going to list the multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12. That's probably enough. And I'm going to list the multiples of 9, a couple of them. 9, 18, 27. I'm just doing 9 times 1, 9 times 2, 9 times 3 in my head. Now I'm looking for the least common multiple, the smallest number that they have in common in their list of multiples. And there it is, 9. So my least common multiple is going to be 9, which becomes my new denominator for both fractions. So I'm going to have a fraction equivalent to 2 thirds with a denominator of 9. I make that my new denominator here. And I'm going to have this one that's equal to 9. Well, we can start here. This is really easy. If we are going to keep 9 as our denominator, then this fraction is not going to change. In other words, we're really just multiplying by 1, the numerator, and the denominator. We don't have to do anything because it's already in the best form to be able to compare it to this one. Now I ask myself, how do I get from 3 to 9? Well, I multiply by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator. 2 times 3 is 6. So now we have, you see here that we just multiply by a one whole fraction. So now I have that 2 thirds is equivalent to 6 ninths. And that 6 ninths fraction 
is a lot easier to compare to seven ninths. When my denominators are the same, then I just look at my numerators, and this one is lar the larger fraction. So six ninths is less than seven ninths, but more importantly, the problem that we started with, two thirds, is less than seven ninths.